Hey there everyone, Hatesh here, back again with another video and uh, welcome to another video on React Native. In this particular video, we're going to be learning about how to build the UI with the flat list, of course, uh, about the tic-tac-toe. The logic part, we have already done it. It's pretty simple, straightforward. You can rewatch the video again. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I have actually started, initialized my app on the device as well. So there we go. This is nice and easy. Uh, we will be... Uh, Let's just minimize this also. We don't need this now. There we go. Should be all. Uh, come on. Ah, you can hide it. Nope, it doesn't hide it. I'll minimize this one first here and we'll close this, this one. <laughs> all right. Uh, first thing that we have is I have some stylings with me. I'll just paste this up. So all the stylings is about, uh, let me just walk you through so it's much more easier for you. Uh, so the first part is player info. Uh, this is just the top banner. There is nothing much. We have designed the direction as row, center, center, some border radius, offset, some shadows and like that. Then we have the game turn next. Whose turn is it next? So that's color is getting highlighted. Player X background and player zero background. So player X or O, whatever you call that, different backgrounds are there. And then we have some cards, some winner info, winner text, game button, game button text. So Pretty uh, special, uh, straightforward, nothing special about it. Uh, we have worked quite a lot on the second app about understanding this piece of code. So there should be and uh, there shouldn't be any problem at all. Now, how we're going to work through this piece of code. First of all, let's go ahead and move this uh, snack bar into one piece of line. There we go. We'll remove this view entirely because our view is divided into a couple of portions like the top portion, middle portion and the end portion for the resetting of that. Uh, so what we're going to do is first we'll start the JavaScript here because we want to conditionally render who is winner or not. So based on the state that we have is the game winner. Uh, what we want to do, this is our condition to check in case you don't remember. Uh, notice here the game winner, uh, set game winner. So this is the game winner class which we are working on. If it is empty, then it's nobody's winner. If it is there is something in it, that means somebody has won the game. So based on this, we'll render either this portion of the app or either this portion of the app. That's pretty standard and straightforward. We'll go into the first portion of this one. We'll start a simple view just like this. This view obviously will have some of the styles. We have already designed these styles, so you don't have to worry too much on that part. Uh, we will have a styles array. So we'll just go ahead and say uh, styles, styles, there we go. And the first one is player info that we have. And the second one is winner info. So styles dot winner info. There we go. So this is the view that we have. Once we have in this view, we'll just uh, show up a text uh, just like this. Now this text will be saying whatever and whoever is the game winner is. So we'll be just providing the text of game winner. While checking the winner, we have a method check winner. And in this check winner, we are actually filling up the value of the game winner. So here we are going to just provide a styling to this. In case you don't want to worry about the styling and want to go for the logic part only, that's also fine. Uh, but since we have provided you one, so I think uh, that will help you as well. So this style will be styles.winnerText. There we go. No problem at all. Really basic and simple. This is the text where the game winner is there. So we want to provide a message for the game winner. But in case there is no game winner, then we want to mention whose turn it is. So we are going to provide this here in this piece of block and where we are going to simply go ahead and start a simple view just like this. Now in this view, first let's have some styling. So we'll just go like this. Styles is going to be like this and we'll again have a styles array. We're going to go ahead and say styles dot uh, player info. This is what we have. This is the big box that we have at the top. And apart from this, we are going to mention that Based on is cross, we'll be providing whose turn it is. So we'll be doing something if it is cross, otherwise we'll do something else. So what we are going to do if it is is cross, then we are going to go ahead and use styles dot player x. If it is other part of the code, then we are going to go ahead and say styles dot player o or player zero. So whatever you want to go and whatever you want to call that. All right, so this is based on the view. So this will just change the color of the top bar that it is a cross turn or it is a circle turn, nothing much. Now inside this view, we will provide just the text that we have. So let's go ahead and say text just like this. And this text will be saying, uh, player, uh, we'll be saying player, just like this. 
all right so here we have to obviously inject a variable so we'll just go like this and we'll be saying is cross so based on this whose turn it is if it is is cross then obviously the turn is of x you can use uh, icons here as well but i'll just go with the basic one otherwise the turn is of zeros or o's however you like to go with that and we'll just go so there we go this will just display whose turn it is we'll provide some of the styling to this one so we'll just go with the style and that style is going to be styles dot uh, game turn text there we go so save this this will be absolute basic that we have so this is going to say player o's turn so player x turn and if i go ahead and change this to false uh, which is just here uh, let me just move this if i go ahead and turn this into true uh, save this so there we go so these are the two colors that we are using absolutely simple and basic and uh, i'll turn it into false because that's the logic we are working so this is the top part we have worked on so far now we have to work on the games grid now game grid is hard coded we know that there are nine blocks into it so we can just hard code the values in the flat list uh, it's not like flat list is always and always used just for the array repetition you can hard code here is one such example and scenario for that uh, so let's go ahead and call this one as uh, let's go ahead and move like this so we'll say game grid i'll comment this out there we go okay so how we can use it flat list obviously let's bring the flat list there we go now flat list self-closing is good enough for the flat list it will surely give us an error because it requires some of the minimum uh, props that needs to be passed on into this first one is number of columns uh, obviously we know this is going to be three because it's a three by three grid so no uh, rocket science there then we'll be having some data like which data should i trade through which one should i go for and obviously we have a game state for that remember game state was an array we initialized it with the array dot fill method yep exactly the same uh, but this is not we also have to provide that what item should i render and key values and all of that uh, i'm not going to provide the key prop here you should do that again this is a simple uh, key prop that you can go ahead and provide that but i'll go with that we also have a styling written for it in case you want to go for this again uh, look into it styles dot grid there we go okay last but not the least which item do you want to repeat that is known as render item now this render item really simple we go always like this there we go so that we don't have to return the values and stuff uh, we're going to go ahead and destructure the values the first uh, value that is provided to us is item and the second is index all right uh, so again remember the game state is an array it provides the item which is empty obviously uh, but it also provides the index as well so second parameter is index next information new information that you have learned really simple and further down the road we want to have just a pressable item okay let's go up here and simply say press able there we go and pressable just goes like this and inside this pressable first and foremost let's hit an enter here and move up here so what do you want to do in the pressable first of all we want to have a key uh, the key is going to be index uh, you can actually go ahead and provide the keys into flat list as well or you can provide the keys on the pressable as well what this will happen is pressable when is being provided as a key it will act twice it will iterate obviously but it will also give us the value that on which index uh, the value is there because uh, right now this is pressable just as a button but we want to keep a track that where actually is being pressed so we are using an index so zeroth values of the grid is being pressed first value is being pressed second value is being pressed that is more important for us we are doing some actions based on that and further down the road obviously we have some style for this as well again styles dot card okay last but not least what should happen on press there we go uh, obviously we will be using an arrow functions or a callback just like this and we'll be saying on change item there we go and in the on change item we'll be passing on this index here that is how we actually go ahead and work on with this i'll minimize this for a second uh, so that we can go ahead and work on with this so this is the part where on pressable is there but right now there is no value inside the pressable so for this we're going to use our uh, custom design component that we have and in this self-closing of course we'll be providing a name the name is going to be like this and we'll be saying the item all right so this is it let's go ahead and work on with this so there we go uh, we worked on this 
Now if I click on this one, it says zero. So our logic is working absolutely fine. Now it's X's turn. X is going nice and zero and X and zero and X and zero and X just like this. So circle won the game. Uh, circle won the game? Yeah, circle won the game from here. Okay, so this is the basic one, but now we want to say that how we can restart the game as well. So we are gonna go, we'll minimize this for a second and we're gonna close this flat list uh, no, we'll keep it like that. Uh, we'll go outside of this flat list and this is the portion where we are going to provide the game action. So game action simply means the resetting of the button. Nothing much more than that. Absolutely simple. So here we are going to again have a pressable button. So we'll be saying pressable. There we go. In the pressable, uh, first and foremost, let's have a text. We have a styling for text as well. So the text is going to say that simply who is the game winner and uh, if somebody is a game winner, we want to start a new game. Otherwise, we want to reload the game. Uh, really simple. Uh, but on press is going to same. It is going to just reload the game. The functionality is same. Call it with a different name. So let's just go ahead and say if there is a game winner, then we want to have a text of start new game. And if there is no winner, then we want to reload the game. Reload the game. All right, really simple. Let's go ahead and have some of the text stylings as well. Style is going to be styles dot game button text. Uh, the pressable is also going to have two properties, the style, which we have already written and the pressable event, which also we have worked on. So first let's take down the style part. And this one is going to be styles dot game button. Now let's take down the on press on press. And we're going to go ahead and say reload game. No parameter needs to be passed on this part. Absolutely simple. Uh, let's save this, bring it up back. And there we go. We have a start new game. So once I click on this, it reloads the game. If I am middle in this, it says I want to reload the game. Let's reload this. But if somebody is winning, obviously, as soon as we do this, this changes that start new game. So you can see we have written an optimized code, which is not causing any problem at all of re-rendering the issues or not loading the issues. This is uh, some minor things that you learn on the go. Uh, we're already writing a high quality code. Uh, that is one thing which I'm absolutely happy about this entire series. So there we go, told you it's not really that much of a complex issue that we can work on with this. Now, this is the best part about this, that how you can take this game onto a next level. Now, right now, this is a basic tic-tac-toe game. But you can learn a little bit on your own that how you can add sounds on the click of the button. Obviously, our next app is going to take a lot uh, about the sounds and how to play music and all of that. Uh, but I think if you do a little bit of a research, just click on a button, it also plays some music. That would be really, really great that you have upgraded this app into a tiny bit more. Not too much, but tiny bit more. Uh, I hope you are enjoying this series. Again, a big shout out to Hashnode. Without them, the series was, wouldn't be possible. And uh, that's a great platform to share your knowledge and learn from other people's knowledge as well. Uh, that's it for this video. Let's catch up in the next one.